Hi, today's video we're going to be in John chapter 1 verses 43 through 51, part 2 of the first disciples to follow Jesus. So as we learned in last week's video, John, Andrew, and Peter joined Jesus at the first as the first disciples to follow Jesus. Now we're going to find out that more decide to follow this great teacher. So verses 43 through 51 in the NLT Bible. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph of Nazareth. Nazareth, exclaimed Nathanael, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Come see for yourself, Philip replied. As they approached, Jesus said, Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me? Nathanael asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. Jesus asked him, Do you believe this just because I told you that I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth, you will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. So verse 43 says, The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. So Jesus decides he's going to go to Galilee, and this is up north. And when they go to Galilee, they find Philip. So God has all these divine plans for Jesus. He's on a divine timeline. And Jesus has to go to these places so he could pick up his disciples. And this is the same town where Peter and Andrew grew up in. So verse 45 says, Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. So Andrew went and found Peter. And now you see Philip goes and finds his friend Nathanael. And he says that we have found the prophet Moses wrote about in Deuteronomy 18.15. Moses continued, The Lord your God will rise up for you a prophet like me from among your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. So this is all part of the prophecy. And Jesus was the one. So Philip wastes no time to tell Nathaniel that his name was Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. So he's telling them, we have found the one everybody's been searching for, everyone is talking about, and the one we're anticipating. We have found the Messiah, and he is from the town of Nazareth. So verse 46 says, Nazareth, exclaimed Nathaniel, can anything good come from Nazareth? Come see for yourself, Philip replied. Same thing Jesus told Philip, right? So Nazareth was despised by the Jews because of the Roman garrison was located there. Some have speculated that a bad attitude or a poor reputation in morals and religion was being practiced by the people in that area. That is what led to Nathaniel's hard comment. John 21 will tell us that Nathaniel was from the town of Cana of Galilee, which is four miles from Nazareth. And that town of Cana is going to be the first miracle Jesus performs in. First town that Jesus performs his miracle in. So Nathaniel is one of those guys that is very truthful, and if he's thinking it, he's going to speak it. He was surprised to hear that Jesus was from Nazareth, but Philip gets right to the point. He says, if you don't believe me, just come and take a look for yourself. Imagine what had happened if Philip stuck to his prejudices without investigating of who Jesus was. He may have missed the chance to walk with God, but most of all, he would have missed his only opportunity for his only way to salvation. So that's the lesson here is don't let your prejudices keep you from going to church or keep you from letting somebody come to your church. Remember, God came for everybody. If something happened to you at church, keep going. Bad things happen to you at Walmart, you still go there, right? If bad things happen to you at gas stations, you still go to a gas station. Don't let just because something bad happened to you or you had a bad experience at church, give you the excuse not to go. Because I'm telling you, that excuse can make you miss your only way to eternal life. So verse 47 says, As they approached, Jesus said, Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. 
In verse 48 says, How do you know about me? Nathanael asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. So Nathanael decides to go and check it out. And Philip wastes no time to take Nathanael straight to Jesus. And as they approach, Jesus sees them coming and he says, Now here's a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. Because Jesus knows who we are. So Jesus stuns Nathanael with a few words. He claims that Nathanael was a devout student of the Torah, a righteous Jew taught to live in accordance with all the light he had. So Nathanael counters with, how do you know about me? And then Jesus replies, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. So some think that the fig tree was some spiritual place Nathanael hung out to pray. But Jesus knew about this secret place that he had, if that's the case. And some scholars think that under the fig tree means that to describe a meditation on the law. And that Nathanael was reading Genesis 28, in which Jesus will quote in the next verse. So now Nathanael knows Jesus' omniscience. Jesus knows everything. He knows all, sees all, right? And Jesus knew where he was and what he was doing before Philip found him. And this is all it took to convince Nathanael who Jesus really was. Jesus lets Nathanael know that he knows who he is before they even met. And he knows what your heart is really like. And he's telling him, he says, An honest person won't care what Jesus thinks of him and feels comfortable with Je what Jesus thinks about him. But some of us don't want Jesus to know what we do in the dark or behind closed doors. But right here shows you that he knows. He knows what you do at night. He knows what you do in your bedroom at night or when your doors are closed. He knows what you're thinking. He's gonna know. He knows what you're going to do before you even do it. God knows you. God knows the real you. You might be able to hoodwink others, but you're not going to hoodwink God. Just remember that. So verse 49 says, Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. So you see, Nathanael calls Jesus Rabbi, which means great teacher, and then he declares him as the Son of God and calls him the King of Israel. But Jesus questions the statement. So verses 50 through 51, he says, Jesus asked him, Do you believe this just because I told you you seen? I, I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth, you will see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. So, God, so Jesus is asking him, Do you believe me? Because I told you where you have been. He's saying hang around. Because this isn't all you're going to see. You're about to see a lot more. There's 35 recorded miracles. Over 35 recorded miracles in the Gospels. And in fact your hometown in this next session is going to be my very first one. He says you're, gonna, you're about to see the lame walk. The blind see. People rise from the dead. But most of all. He says I tell you the truth. You're going to see. Heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man. The one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. So Jesus is referring to Genesis 28, 12. And that's why the scholars think that maybe he was reading this at the time. Which says, as he slept, who was Jacob, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from earth up to heaven. And he saw the angels of God going up and down on that stairway. And Jesus is telling him that you will see that I am the ladder between heaven and earth, that new bridge to God. Jesus is that ladder that connects God to man and man to God. Jesus was the surer link between heaven and earth than the ladder which Jacob seen as the way to God. Nathaniel's Old Testament, Old Covenant faith must now center in Jesus, which is the focus of the New Covenant. Jesus calls himself the Son of Man, the unique God-man, who would give the spiritual insight to Jesus' true nature and purpose for coming. Jesus calls himself the Son of Man over 80 times, and he emphasizes on his humanity and suffering as well as the perfection of his human nature. Five men met with the Lord, all different, all believers, all models. Witnessing is the key to leading people to the Lord, starting in the home and taking it out in the workplaces, ball teams, friends, sports arenas, etc. 
Witnessing also promotes the Lord and not ourselves or some personal agenda. And I'm telling you, witnessing can be difficult because people are going to give you opposition. But it reaps the rewards of God. Remember, we need to make God happy, not other people. If you lose a few friends over your salvation, so be it. At least you gain a father in heaven, right? Eternal life. But God does. God shares. God cares. And he puts it out there. So we need to tell everyone what Jesus has done for you in your life. And you want to know the most inspiring thing about these disciples and how Jesus picked them? He picked a bunch of ordinary, everyday men to be his followers. They didn't have an education on, them, on the Bible. They were fishermen, blue-collar workers, everyday people. And that just shows you that God can use imperfect people to do his perfect plan. Don't think you're not good enough or worthy enough to do God's will. He can pick those traits that he has given you and urge you to use them for his glory. And that's why he picked every one of these disciples. Every one of them brought a thing to the table, just like we do. Every one of us has a particular skill set that God can use to give him that we can use to give God glory. And that's the reason why he gave us that skill set. Because if everybody had the skill set of preaching, there'd be nobody to listen. And if everybody had listening skills, there'd be nobody to, to preach. And if they didn't have people who could serve at the church, then there would be nothing to, to keep the church running. So I'm just saying, don't think that you can't be a part of God's plan, because you are. Just like these everyday, ordinary disciples were, they were imperfect, they made mistakes, just like we will. We're going to make mistakes, we're going to sin, we're going to do all kinds of things that we're not proud of. But the main thing is, is that we follow Jesus wholeheartedly, we give our life to him, and realize that he is the way to make us perfect in God's eyes. And then use them, that gift that he gives us, that gift of salvation and grace, to spread the word to everyone else so we can glorify God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for listening to my videos. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Please leave a comment in the comment section. But may, most of all, please share these videos to other people so we can get the message out to glorify God. Thank you for all who listens. Amen.